Throughout the course of its history, cult masonry has attracted and produced many great people, some known to popular history and some completely unknown. Alexandra David Neal is a unique individual in that she stands between these two worlds. Famous for her world travels, writings, and accomplishments, while her involvement in Freemasonry, one of her great passions, is almost completely forgotten. Born in France in 1868 to a Freemason by the name of Louis David, Alexandra was a unique child for her day. By the age of 15, she was engaged in ascetic practices usually reserved for medieval monasteries and was mentored in the principles of liberty, equality, and fraternity by her father. By 18, she had traveled throughout Europe and had joined both the Theosophical Society and the mixed rite of ancient free and accepted masonry, the French precursor to universal co-masonry. Because of her involvement in the Theosophical Society, Alexandra became fascinated by the history and teachings of Eastern culture and quickly acquired knowledge of Sanskrit and Tibetan. She used this knowledge to launch several solo expeditions to India, unheard of for a woman of that time. It was at this time that she became a devout Buddhist and became fixated on penetrating the land of Tibet, which was at that time completely sealed off to foreigners. This land of mystery and intrigue drew her fascination, and she was determined to pierce the veil of its mysteries. In 1924, disguised as a transient monk, David Neal entered the forbidden city of Lhasa, one of Buddhism's most holy sites and a city completely sealed off to outsiders. In doing so, she became the first Western woman to see Lhasa in all recorded history. David Neal would spend the rest of her life traveling extensively through Tibet, India, and China, furthering her studies and publishing over 30 books on religious and esoteric subjects. In this way, she became an immensely strong influence on the beat culture that was emerging at the time of her death, with many famous authors citing her work as inspiration. In 1969, after just over a century of life, Alexandra passed on to the Grand Lodge Eternal, though she still lives as legend in the annals of Freemasonry.